As humans, we wish some moments would slow down and others would speed up. But our ability to manipulate the minute hand evades us like a trout slipping from an angler's grip. My guess is there is no fountain of youth, but we do have the ability to transcend time. And I think the way we do this is to have passions that last a lifetime and to share those passions with the people who mean much to us. When we got down to the stream, um, it was, you know, it's one of those times where when you see it, you just kind of light up. Like you kind of, you kind of go, yeah, this is, this is going to be good regardless of what happens today. Well, we, we got here after a long drive this morning and, and uh, uh, there were still low clouds uh, over the mountains. We couldn't even see the mountains. And uh, we walked down to the, to the river and had a look and it was clear, which was great. And uh, shuffled down onto a little rock ledge. And it was, it, was a, it was a pretty deep hole and there were fish that were coming up. You could see them, the, the clarity of the water. The fish were coming right up off the bottom. They were feeding, I think they were feeding on pale morning duns. Paul had seen a, a fish feeding right, right near the shore, like near the shore that we were standing on, which was quite a, quite a cut bank down into, down into some rocks. And Paul said, hey, like, drop your fly right there. Um, we, we actually got one of the cameramen to drop a camera into the hole and we dropped the, I dropped the fly right onto the spot where the fish was rising and sure enough that fish came up. Got him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good call, Paul. <laughs> that was awesome. Now how am I going to land this? And Derek caught a couple by, by sort of sneaking out through the trees and reaching out with his rod and dapping the dry fly right in front of the fish, which is a pretty neat way to catch, to catch these guys. And I got in, uh, crossed the, the river and, and went, uh, went kind of across and downstream from them and, and put the little parachute atoms over these fish and they were, they were, pretty, they were pretty cooperative too. And it was, uh, that was probably my favorite part of the day. I love, there's nothing I like better than casting dry flies to rising fish and uh, I got to do that with three or four fish in that one run. There was an occasional fish rising, which really made me feel better, uh, knowing how cold it had been and how, how cool the water was. And through the morning, the fish just started rising a little more all the time. There was a, a, a nice hatch of little blueing olives and, and, and a couple of other mayflies on the water too, and the, the fish started coming up. It was interesting, because I was on the foam fly, and, uh, and Jim, he, he, he waded across the stream, and as soon as he waded across the stream, he, you know, I saw him over there changing flies, and, uh, and he got into, he started getting into fish right away. Uh, Derek, I think, tried those dumb foam flies that, you know, are a fish as smart as a trout should be caught on a fly as dumb as that. Uh, and, and they didn't work. So that wasn't a great start um, to my foam fly fishing, but, uh, but then I went to smaller naturals as Jim proceeded to catch fish after fish after fish after fish. And so I was kind of wondering what was going to happen there. Even, even though I went to naturals, I wasn't catching right away until I actually went over and stood by the Grand Master. And, uh, and he said, oh, here, Derek, here's a fly for you. And uh, we tried a couple of flies, um, but we switched to a uh, little parachute atoms about size 16, which was a reasonable imitation of the little blueing olive, and a lot of those fish ate it. And so I, uh, I humbled myself, I put the fly on, and then I started catching fish. So what'd you catch them on? I caught them on a size 16 Adams. Ah. It just came to my mind, you know? Yeah. Good idea, that fly.
serenity of remote surroundings, the mesmerizing flow of water, trout sipping a well-placed fly, and the newness of each adventure. These events, which catch the flangler off guard, may just be what feed the desire of the lifelong angler.